Okay, this time on why educational games should be awesome, instructional styles. And this is actually something that all games have to deal with. Because if you want people to play your game, it has to teach people how to play it. And this becomes more important the more complicated your game is. So real-time strategy games and other games with complex systems actually have to spend a lot of time thinking about how to teach people how to use those systems. A lot of games use tutorials that are really easy to make, but kind of boring. On the other hand, you have games like Portal, which is arguably like 80% tutorial, but it's super engaging, and it's great! And I think part of the reason for that is that games as a medium are actually really well suited to being an expression of a really effective instructional style. Let me explain. So in the literature there are two main instructional styles. One of them is generally referred to as either transmissive or traditional, and the other is referred to as either constructivist or guided discovery. The model for transmissive instruction is right there in the name. One expert transmits knowledge to many recipients, and the model is they're just receiving this knowledge, passively absorbing it. A lot of times this is used to describe like non-interactive video, lecture classes, things like that. And you can think of this as a sort of, you will learn by the numbers that I will teach you kind of instruction. And you can see why this is called the traditional model. Now the constructivist model, on the other hand, you don't have an expert transmitting it. What you have is a facilitator helping someone construct their own knowledge. They're helping the learner explore the material and make sense of it on their own. And this is also why it's called guided discovery. So maybe you're presenting new information to them, or giving them a problem and supporting them as they try and solve it. And one of the key differences here is with the transmissive style, is sort of top-down. You have the instructor controlling the pace of the instruction for all the learners. Whereas in the constructivist approach, there's this interplay of the learner and the instructor. The learner is affecting the pace and direction of the instruction, so they can make sure the level of challenge is appropriate to their ability, and they can focus on aspects that they actually find interesting. But at the same time, this isn't the open discovery model, it's totally guided by the learner. There's still a role for the instructor to help the learner avoid known problems and provide context and additional resources. This is more like Plato's I can't teach anyone, I can only make them think. Okay, now since we've already talked about motivation, you can sort of see the problems with transmissive instruction. Like, it's super passive, it's extrinsic by design. If the learners aren't already interested, the design of the instruction isn't going to do a lot to foster that interest. But with guided discovery, the learners have some agency and some control. So they can make sure the pace matches them, and learners can find those connections to things that are interesting to them. The design serves to foster that interest. Now, coming back to video games, I like to argue that by their nature, they're an embodiment of guided discovery, and you actually have to ignore that in order to make the transmissive, easy-to-design tutorial. I say it's nature because think about what a game is. It's a designed artificial world, and this can be a very simple world, like Pong, or it can be a mind-bogglingly complex world, like WoW, or EVE, or Skyrim, but it's an artificial world that someone made and then the player gets to explore. And that's sort of the definition of guided discovery, because as a player, you get to control where you go and how you interact with things within the boundaries that the designer has already made. Because they get to decide where you can go, what's in the world, what's important about the things in the world, what information to highlight, how you interact with objects, what actions you can take, what's possible within the world. And you don't even have to be aware of any of the decisions as you're just going where you want and exploring. I mean, again, think about Portal. There are limited ways that you can interact with that world, basically by moving, portaling, and picking things up. And then there's the design of the test chambers, the progression of challenges, each building on the previous one. Rather than telling you, put a portal here, you're put in a situation where you figure it out at your own pace and feel satisfaction that you've figured this out, while at the same time getting the information the designers wanted you to get that fits into the progression they've laid out from the beginning guided discovery. So when you see unengaging tutorials, it's kind of ignoring this aspect of games as a medium. And that's not just about controls. This can also be about the story, or the narrative, or other content. Is it more satisfying to get some info dump cutscene, or to figure out what's going on in the course of play? Both of those are information coming from the people who designed that game, but the impact is different. Now while I'm really excited about guided discovery, there are pros and cons to the traditional and guided discovery approaches. One of the benefits of a traditional instructional style is that it's really easy and it tends to be scalable. I mean, look at this video. I can transmit my ideas to lots of you. On the other hand, with guided discovery, it tends to take more work from the instructor to actually work with each individual learner. And this is one of the benefits of games being interactive. 
They can have some responsiveness to the player built into them. Another thing about the traditional style is it's really good for getting people to memorize things and develop rote skills. I mean, it's all well and good to want to explore your times tables, but you need to remember that. On the other hand, Guided Discovery is really good at getting people to think deeply and creatively about things. And this is consistent with motivational and educational work. Traditional instruction tends to rely more on extrinsic motivations, like grades. And these tend to be better at getting people to do rote things quickly. Whereas Guided Discovery tends to rely more on in intrinsic rewards, and these are better at getting people to think creatively and come up with new ideas. So these instructional styles sort of have parallels to the motivations they use, and we see this in the outcome. So for next time, consider the games and classes you've taken. What kind of instructional style did they have? Did it vary within the experience? 